Hi, so welcome to lesson number 5, module 9 of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. In this lesson, we will be talking about the Flume configuration. So before we proceed with the lesson, let's have a quick recap of the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, we have learned about Flume data flow, the fan out and fan in scenarios, and we also had a look at the delivery guarantee aspect of Flume. So in this lesson, we will learn how to configure a Flume agent. Now, once we download and extract the Flume source files, we have to configure the agent so that the agent can run. Now, the agent uses a configuration file, which is a simple Java property file having key and value pairs. So this is just like any regular Java property file wherein you can define the key and values. Now, we have to pass values to the keys in the file to uh, determine the correct configuration. So usually in a typical uh, Flume configuration scenario, we have to first name the components of the current agent. For example, an agent will have a source, sync and channel. So we have to give a name for the source, sync and channel. Then we have to describe and configure the source, sync and channel independently. Like we have to say what are the properties of the source what type of source we are using. Then we have to describe and configure the sync. For example, if it is the HDFS sync, then in which location you want the data to be stored. Then of course, we have to configure the channel also, the properties of the channel such as the buffer, space, etc. At last, we should bind the source and sync to the channel. Otherwise, the Flume agent will not work. So typically, you define names for your source, sync, channel, then have individual configurations for source, sync, and channel, then bind the source and sync using the channel, and then the Flume agent can run. In a typical Flume deployment, we may have multiple agents. We therefore use a unique name to differentiate and configure each agent. So here we can have a look at some of the most common sources, channels, and sinks. Now, if you look at the sources, you can see that there are sources like Twitter. So that is the Twitter tweets that we are collecting. You also have popular sources such as Thrift and Avro and Kafka. Now, if you look at the channel, usually you have a memory channel, which is the buffer of your system, and file channel, which is the uh, persistent hard disk storage. When you look at the sync, either you can commit it to finally into HDFS, Hive, HBase, or even Kafka or Elasticsearch. Now let's have a look at how a typical Flume agent configuration will be. Now in the next slide, we'll be explaining this in detail. So this is the common format of defining an agent. Now here you can see that I'm I'm writing agent.sources equals to a source name, agent.sinks equals to a sync name, agent.channels equals to a channel name. Maybe there are two channels, so channel 1 and channel 2. And then I'm writing agent.sources source.channels equals channel 1, channel 2, and agent.sync sync.channel equals channel 1. So First, we have to define a name for our agent. It can be any name, but has, it has to be unique within the Flume uh, ecosystem. Then agent.sources equals sources. There I'm defining a name for my source. Much the same way, I'm defining a name for my sync and two channels. So I'm calling them as channel one and channel two. Now under the set channel for source, you can see that I'm writing source channels equals channel one and channel for sync, I'm writing sync channel equals channel one. So this is how you connect the source and sync to the same channel. So basically you follow a hierarchical uh, pattern where you say for this agent, inside the sources, this source, the channel is going to be channel one. And for this agent inside the sinks, this particular sync, the channel is going to be channel one. If you look at the last two lines, set channel for source and set channel for sync, you can see that both the source and sync are bound by the same channel, which is channel one here. Here you can see that after defining the flow, we are mentioning the properties of each source, sync and channel. Now, this is done in the same hierarchical fashion. For example, for source, I'm writing agent.sources 
dot source, which is my source name, some property equals some value. Maybe for the source, I'm defining uh, an API of Twitter, which can receive Twitter data as source. Now for property of channel, you can say channel dot channel, some property equals some value. So I can say that for the channel, the buffer memory is 100 megabytes. The same way for sync also you can define individual properties. Now the property type needs to be set for each component to understand what kind of object it needs to be. The source, sync and channel will have individual properties. So adding multiple flows in an agent. Now a single flume agent can contain several independent flows. We can have multiple sources and sinks and channels within the same config files. So the format will be something like this. So for example, I can say agent.sources equals source1, source2, and sync, sync1, sync2, and channels, channel1, channel2. Maybe source1 is Twitter, channel1 is file channel, sync1 is HDFS. Source2 can be uh, something like Avro, channel2 can be memory channel, sync2 can be HBase. So to wrap up in this particular lesson, we have learned how to configure Plume agent. That's all for this lesson.